Let's do another reflection example. I read a blog post forever ago when they were making, I think it was C-sharp 3.0, and they were trying to determine uh, what would qualify for some special syntax they were adding at the time. Let's let's do this. Var me list gets new list of int, control dot, enter, and remember now in C-sharp 3.0 you can add values to a list, sure, whatever. You can initialize lists like that. That's new in C-sharp 3.0. We weren't able to do that. And then I can say me list, and I have this p function. It's an extension method that will print everything inside of the list for me. So there we go. Anyway, I remember reading a blog on on uh, what what they would allow to do this. Okay, because the compiler just turns around and says, oh, oh I, I see what needs to go on here. The compiler says, well, Let's do that, and then uh, control L, control L, control L, and then let me do a little macro here. Control Shift R, me list dot add parenthesis right at arrow parenthesis semicolon delete key enter, and then I'll hit stop on my macro. Control Shift P to play it. P P P P P. Oh. Looks like it went awry. Oh, it failed on the 47. <laughs> Let me control Z all that. Control Z, Z, control Y, Y. Um, let's get rid of this. Control P, 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 P. So I should have used single digit numbers. But you see, now I have all these ads. All right, control F5, run that, and we get the same result. And that's exactly what the compiler does, except it doesn't break the 4 and the 7 apart. But the compiler... When it sees the syntax that I used before, it literally just converts it to a bunch of ads because this, or I guess it was 45 that I split up, this syntax is not natively supported by the CLR. Okay, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's purely a C-sharp sugar thing and the compiler sugarizes it. Well, in that blog post, which I looked forever to find the original blog post, I only remember the concepts from it, I could not find the original blog post, so all credit to that blog post. But I thought this was a good use of reflection when I saw it. I think it was one of the Microsoft developers' blogs. Anyway, if you find it, please drop it in the comments, because all credit due to that. Uh, th what they were determining with uh, classes here, because like, we got a main class right now, and I can't turn around and say, hey, new main class... All right, the compiler is going to freak if I do this. Say, I, 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 it's, it's not a collection because it does not implement iEnumerable. And so the debate was, what are we going to allow this syntax with? And what they decided was they're going to do it with classes that implement iEnumerable and also have an add method. I could certainly give a main class an add method. Let's do void. Whoops, void add int blah. And we'll do absolutely nothing in there. And I can build this, and it says, hey, uh, you got to implement I enumerable too. So I enumerable, uh, and that's all I have to do. I, I, I can do the non generic I, I enumerable. Control Shift B to build this. And, oh, of course we have to implement it. Control Dot, please implement I enumerable for me. And uh, we'll just return null here. Uh, no big deal. Now this should compile. Control Shift B, build succeeded. In fact, I can even come here in the add function and prove to you the compiler calls add for every single one of these. Let's right line blah, and we'll see the output will be 3, 7, 45, 1, 2, 3, 4, and there you go. Uh, we can see the result there. Why are we getting a null? Who called get numerator? Oh, dot p. My dot p function called get numerator. Anyway, let me I can get rid of that and get rid of the error, and there we go. We see the add function, add method, sorry, this is C-sharp, add method being called several times. Well, the debate they had was, what are we going to allow to do this? And they thought, well, maybe, well, what's a collection type? This is a, a collection of values, and and so we'll let all classes that are collection types to to do this initialization thing. Well, what's a collection type? I mean, a dictionary is a collection, is it not? And a list is a collection, a link list, a, a, anything you want to write could be a collection. And so what it kind of came down to is most collections implement iEnumerable. Right? iEnumerable has nothing to do with the ability to add something to a class. It's only the ability to be able to enumerate over it. 
All right, but but if I implement I enumerable, I'm looking a lot like a collection. And then uh, if I have an add method, well then, then then the compiler can certainly call add. And so that, that those were the rules they came up with. And and the way they did that is they did a lot of analysis on the built-in collection types. They had to look at them and say, what do these things have in common? What do they not have in common? What's you know if it's a collection, if it implements I collection, is that good enough? Well, I collection. If you look at the I collection interface, let me just pull it in here. I collection interface and hit F12. Um, there's no add method on this, right? I mean, this, and the the generic one I think is even worse. I collection of int. Let me uh, go to F12 on that. And, and uh, oh, there's a few more methods. And why do people implement I enumerable more than I collection? Well, I collection is a very specific interface for things that are almost sequence like. Right? It looks a lot like a list or a leak list, but it definitely doesn't look like a dictionary because when you call add on a dictionary, you have to give it two items, a key and a value, and so. So dictionary doesn't implement I collection. Anyway, hopefully you get the idea. I'm babbling. Let me show you how they used reflection to analyze the uh, the data types. And let me just show you how I kind of came around. I had to work a lot of this on my own because um, I couldn't remember all the details of the article because I couldn't find the article. But if I say type of list like that, and I say, give me the assembly and .p to print that. Remember, .p is my own extension method. The assembly that list is in is mscorelib, and it turns out when I say system.collections, a lot of that is built into MS Core Library, Microsoft Core Library. This is a very special assembly to .NET. It has a lot of core stuff to it. In fact, chances are, well, pretty much 99.999% of the time, probably 100% of the time, when you're running a .NET executable, uh, MS Core Lib will be the first assembly loaded because it's full of goodies, right? Full of core material. Well, knowing that, I want to know, I want, I want to find out all the types in there, all the uh, generic collection types. Okay, so let's let's do a little bit of analysis here. I'm going to say, hey, assembly, assembly, control dot using system reflection. That should sound familiar. Uh, load up. MS Core Lib and what load does is it says if it's not loaded, let's go load it. But I know it's already loaded. Alright, so I'll say assembly uh, MS Core Lib. It's that. And then uh, watch this. MS Core Lib. Hey, give me all the types that are in there and just count them. Or I guess it returns turns an array, so it's length. And let's uh, let's dot p. Let's print the number of types you have in MS Core Lib and holy smokes I told you it was full of goodies 2780 types I cannot remember the last time I wrote an assembly with that many classes I think it was never all right well well let's look at all these types and figure out um how many of them are in the uh, system.collections namespace so let's flash a little link on here I'm going to say using system.link and MS Core Lib dot get types dot where the type t dot namespace dot contains uh, system dot collections. So that will cover system dot collections and system dot collections dot generic. Give me all those, and then uh, select. Okay, look at me using link on this. Select the name of that type and then my dot p function will go and print that quite nicely for us it'll iterate over the results so ah ah blew up it blew up object reference not so i'm going to hit a five. Oh, the namespace is sometimes null all right well let's use a ternary in here t dot namespace if it's equal to null, then just yield false, else yield the result of this contains there. Um, let me zoom out just a little bit. Control F5. Look at that. Here are all the types in the system.collections namespace or system.collections.generic names. Any namespace within system.collections. All these, but not all these are collections. I mean, some of them are helpers, and some of them are interfaces. So that doesn't really tell us too much. Let's let's find out how many of them actually implement I enumerable. All right, let's get rid of this 
ternary jazz and say, oopsie. Let's say t dot get interfaces dot any of those interfaces. So I'm going to say interface type. That's it for it interface type. Interface type dot equals type of. Or actually, it's a generic. I have to say uh, get. Oh, it's going to be interesting. It dot is it a generic type? If it is, then it dot get generic type definition. This is, uh, I'm sorry, this is getting a little bit hard to read here. Give me the generic type definition, which is the type definition for generic type. Remember, with generics, there's multiple types, because I could say uh, down here, i enumerable of int. Well, that's different than i enumerable of char. And, and then, what does i enumerable mean? If I say i enumerable just like that, well, then there's another type. So I have three distinct types here, and I just want to say, hey, give me the generic type definitions. So that's what I'm saying there. Uh, any it is a generic type, then <coughs> generic type definition dot equals type of i enumerable. Uh, otherwise, uh, just false. We'll assume no, it's not the generic I enumerable. It can't be. I need to add the angle brackets right here. All right, I hope that's not too unbearable. And that's the end of the any there. So give me the types where their interfaces, if any of their interfaces is, is the generic I enumerable, select that name. So let's look at, oh, more parentheses, expecting parentheses after the equals. Control F5. There you go. Here are all the types that implement the generic I enumerable. In fact, I'm not really interested in their names. I'm interested in how many of them there are. Count them. There are 34. All right, now I should do this elegantly and factor this a little bit, but I'm just going to copy and paste my code. That's a horrible thing to do. But I'm just trying to get to the meat of what I'm attempting to accomplish here. How many of them implement uh, the generic I collection? All right, let's do I collection. Control F5, and we see that 34 built-in types implement the generic I enumerable, and 15 of them implement the generic I collection. So the whole point, of, one of the points of that blog post I was talking about earlier in the video is only 15 types implement I collection, but there's several other types that are collection-ish but they don't necessarily implement iCollection because iCollection is too restrictive of an interface. It requires too much of the implementers to do things with it. Let me let me get that metadata back up here. iCollection, I hit F12 there, and it, it, it requires too much. It's it's we got a, a count and a sync and then a copy too, and and uh, that's still the non-generic one. <laughs> I was expecting the generic one. Where's the? Let me, maybe I have to throw int out there to help Visual Studio. There we go. There we go. And then it has a contain, and it has that add again. And there's just too much here uh, on the iCollection interface. It requires too much of their implementers. And not all collection types necessarily want to have these methods. But pretty much every single collection-ish type implements I enumerable. So then they decided, well, if you implement I enumerable and you have an add method, then we'll allow you to do that list initialization I showed at the beginning of the video. List of int and like so. So anyway, there you go. Using reflection to analyze your types. This is reflection and it's one of its truest forms is let's look at the data. Let's have these assemblies. Let's look at the, have them look in the mirror and tell me all the types you see. And that those types, hey, specific types, look in the mirror and tell me the interfaces and look at your reflection and yada yada yada. This is a long video. Sorry.